Hello and welcome back to a new YouTube video. Today we are going to be doing my Premier League predictions. Normally I do predict the Premier League on my phone but this is the first time I've made an actual video out of it. So kicking it off in 20th place I've gone for West Brom. Now uh, they are obviously newly promoted and newly promoted teams tend not to do that well. There have been some exceptions like Sheffield and Wolves in recent years but I just don't think they've got a Premier League team. Um, I've got their signings up here and they've brought in Matias Pereira which is a good signing but apart from that I don't see anyone they've signed with genuine Prem experience. I think that is what keeps them in the Prem, having players that have played and been successful in the Prem before. In 19th place I've gone for Fulham. Now I think Scott Park is a good manager and I think he will be successful. But again, like West Brom, they haven't really bought in any big names. And I think their team is a championship team. And if you're playing with a championship team in the Premier League, it won't be good enough. In 18th, I've gone for Newcastle. Now, I kind of like to be a bit different on these things because if I am actually right, I look like a genius. Um, so Newcastle in 18th. Uh, the reason I've done this is because I was looking at all the other teams uh, that could have, have been 18th. So I was thinking Leeds, Crystal Palace, uh, there's Brighton, Villa, West Ham. I was thinking, I don't think they're going to go down. So out of those teams and Newcastle, I think Newcastle's the most likely out of those to go down. I don't want to put them as a team that's facing relegation on my predictions, but I just felt like there was no one else that could be there, if that makes sense. And you might be shocked that I put Newcastle there because Newcastle finished, they did well last season, they finished 13th. Um, but if you think about it, Bournemouth and Watford both got relegated last season and they were having mid-season, mid-table finishes for like four or five years in the Prem and then they just dropped down into the relegation zone and that could easily happen to a team like Newcastle. Albeit uh, Newcastle have bought in some players, they bought in Jeff Hendrick from Burnley, I don't think he's going to uh, change the world for them. They bought in Jamel Lewis, well he just got relegated. They bought in Callum Wilson, uh, he also just got relegated um, and he didn't go to Villa so I don't wish him any luck. Um, they've also bought in Ryan Fraser who also got relegated with Bournemouth. So even though on the face of it they look like good signings, all those players have recently been relegated and I'm pretty sure Jeff Hendrick has been relegated in the past so that might not be a good omen for them and also I'm not too convinced with Steve Bruce as a manager in the Premier League yet I know he did well last season but apart from that I don't remember another good season he's had in the Prem in 17th I've gone for Leeds now they're the only newly promoted side I've actually kept up and they obviously won the championship, but that doesn't really mean anything when you get promoted. Um, I think Marcelo Bielsa, he's a very good manager. He's very tactically aware. I feel that he will get the best out of the Leeds players through his tactics. And I am quite impressed with their signings, especially uh, Helder Costa, because I remember going to see Aston Villa versus Wolves, and he was playing for Wolves, and he was by far the best player on the pitch. And... I've seen him do well, very well in the Championship. He's been the best player at times in games in the Championship. So I reckon that is a good signing for them. And I do feel that they will stay up. In 16th, I've gone for Crystal Palace. Now, they finished 14th in the Prem last season. And they could have finished higher, but they were going downhill, like massively downhill at the end of the season. So... Um, if that form does continue, it will be a very weak start to the season for them. But I just feel there's nothing really exciting about them. Like, Crystal Palace don't score many goals. Like, I struggle to see where the goals will come from. Um, they have got strikers, like they've got Wickham, they've got Benteke, they've got IU, But they don't score that much. Uh, Zaha, he, he's a good player, but he doesn't actually score goals that much. They've brought in Ebronichi Ize, I think that's how you say his name, from QPR. Uh, now, he he might help, he might help, but I don't see him him setting the world alight for them. Um, I just don't really see where goals will come from. Like, if you don't score goals, you've got to be solid defensively, and they are fairly solid defensively, but 
you have to score goals to stay in the league. They've been playing this way for ages and done it well. So that's why I don't think they will go down. But I reckon they'll struggle. In 15th, I've gone for Brighton. Now that matches their finish from last season. And I feel like it will just be another Brighton season. Like they'll escape relegation uh, and do fairly well. Like for the size of their club. But they won't like get, get mid-table. Um, I feel like uh, Graham Potter sets them up well defensively. He clearly knows what he's doing as a manager. And they brought in Adam Lallana, which is a really weird signing. But he's won the league at Liverpool last season. He might not have played that much, but he's still won the league. So I reckon he'll be a great addition for them. I reckon that like he'll thrive playing in a smaller team, being the best player. Because at Liverpool, he was kind of... Uh, overshadowed by all their better players. They have lost Aaron Moy though, and he, uh, he was quite good for them last season. And they've also lost Glenn Murray. Uh, he also scored quite a few goals. And they've also lost Duffy as well. So hopefully that doesn't come back to hurt them too much. But I reckon with the addition of Lalana, that sort of cancels out the players they've lost, if that makes sense. Now in 14th, I've gone with my team, Aston Villa. Now, I feel that uh, we won't go down. I feel that we'll build upon last season, but I don't feel like we'll, we'll get like in the top half of the table yet. I feel like we, we've, we've added uh, Cash and Watkins, and th both of them I don't think have played in the Premier League before. So everyone was saying they're really good signings, but because they haven't played in the Premier League before, I don't know how they'll do. So I'm not expecting them to you know, do amazing straight away. Uh, but I still feel that they're good additions. And I feel now that our squad has played in the Prem for a season, they are like, no the ins and outs of it more. I feel that they were just adjusting to it a bit last season because quite a lot of our players hadn't played in the Prem last season. So now that they've got a season under their belt, uh, and we and if we don't lose Jack Grealish, I reckon 14th is fair enough. Oh, and also, I think Craig Shakespeare will be extremely valuable for us. Remember, he has won the Premier League before with Leicester. Now... In 13th, I've gone with West Ham. Now, they finished 16th last season and narrowly avoided relegation. I feel with West Ham, like, I'm shocked whenever they're down uh, towards the relegation zone because they have they have really good players, like Yarmolenko, Felipe Anderson, uh, Antonio, uh, Declan Rice, Mark Noble. On their day, they were all outstanding players, but the thing is, they're really, really inconsistent. If they can get consistency then I reckon they can be higher than 13th, but I've put them down for 13th from this. In 12th, I've gone for Sheffield United. Now, 12th is still good for them. I don't think they'll do outstanding like they did last season. I feel that there'll be a bit more competition this year, because last year a lot of teams below them changed their manager, like Everton, Arsenal and Tottenham, all changed their manager, and I feel that that sort of helped them get higher up the league, if that makes sense, uh, because those teams had a weaker season, but uh, now I reckon the competition will be harder and they'll go down to 12th, uh, which, which is still good for them. They've obviously lost Henderson. I thought Henderson was like the best goalkeeper in the league last season, uh, and they've got Ramsdale in instead, who isn't as good, but I still reckon they'll just, they'll just carry on like from where they were without Henderson and finish 12th. In... 11th, I've gone with Burnley. Now, they finished 10th last season. So, I've put them in a similar kind of area to where they finished last season. Uh, Burnley are a very good team, I reckon. Sean Dyche will keep them up again and finish mid-table again. I don't see them dropping any lower because they're too good, especially defensively. He sets them up really well. But I don't also see them going any higher because there are better teams with a bigger budget and everything higher up than them. So I reckon they'll get an easy mid-table finish again. In 10th, I've gone with Leicester. Now, I think they will be big underachievers compared to what they did last season. Last season, they finished 5th, but they trailed off after lockdown. And I reckon that trail will uh, continue. Uh, they're a good team, but they punched up with their weight last season. The thing with Leicester is they're really inconsistent. Like, they can... They are probably a mid-table team, but they never seem to finish mid-table. They're always either at the top or the bottom, I find. Like, they have these mad seasons where they just do really well. Like, last season, what obviously wasn't as mad as when they won the league, but they are quite inconsistent in terms of their finishes, so they're always really hard to predict. Um, 
I don't reckon Jamie Vardy has as many goals in him as he did last season, because he is obviously getting older. They've lost Ben Chilwell, of course, so I reckon 10th is fair enough, but that's still, that's kind of what they should expect, in my opinion. Uh, in ninth, I've gone for Southampton, so Southampton higher than Leicester will be a bit controversial, because they finished 11th last season. Southampton have brought in Kyle Walker, Peters and Salisu, which I think are good signings, and I respect Hassan Hurtel as a manager. I think uh, his high press style of play works well and suits Southampton. And I reckon it will be a successful season for them. In eighth, I've gone with Arsenal. Now, they've bought in William and they've extended Ceballos' loan. So that will help them. Uh, I feel that they're not quite there. Like, Arsenal want to be competing for Champions League. But I don't reckon that would happen next season. It's obviously going to take time under Arteta to build them back up again. Because they've obviously had a lot of years where they've not been at the top. Uh, they've not been in the Champions League positions. And they have also got the distraction of Europa League football as well. I reckon Aubameyang and Lacazette will be on great form again. But I reckon they'll struggle against the big teams. I reckon they'll beat the little teams because they've obviously got lots of goals in them. But I do reckon they'll struggle against the big teams who have... It just comes down to better quality players. I think Arteta's a great manager who always gets his tactics right. But I just think there's a quality issue and the defenders do make a lot of mistakes with Arsenal. So I don't reckon they'll, they're quite there yet to be challenging for Champions League. In seventh, I've gone with Tottenham, which would actually be a drop down from where they finished last season. Uh, Arsenal fans will hate me for this because I put Tottenham above Arsenal. But I, I feel Mourinho is a tactical mastermind. I feel that he will get it right in big games and Tottenham will beat the big teams. The thing is with Tottenham is it's kind of a reverse from Arsenal. They beat the big teams but lose for little teams. They've brought in Hoysberg, which I think is a great signing. Uh, I don't know if he's like a top class player uh, who will consistently perform week in, week out, but it's still a good signing. And Doherty as well, I reckon, will, will help them out a lot. I reckon they'll be good. Um, and seventh, should Tottenham be happy with seventh? I, I, I wouldn't if I was a Tottenham fan, but... It's a bit like Arsenal, the rebuilding is going to take time and I don't reckon they've got good quality players yet to start challenging for Champions League. In sixth, I've gone with Man United. Now, they obviously finished third last season, so that's very controversial for me. But I just feel like Solskjaer, he, he doesn't really do tactics. I feel like he just says, go and play. Like, I feel he's very weak tactically. And I said this when he came into the Man United job, but he's not the man for the job. He can't manage a team as big as that and I reckon their success is more due to Greenwood, Martial, Rashford being on form and not actually the management so I reckon that if players aren't on form because they won't be on form for the whole season they only jumped up to third because they were on form after lockdown uh, I don't reckon Greenwood, Martial and Rashford will be on super good form all season but they're all of good seasons but I don't reckon that they'll have good enough seasons to get Man United into the Champions League. If that makes sense, I'm still saying they're good players. In fifth, I've gone with Wolves. Now, Wolves finished seventh last season, but this season they've obviously not got Europa League. They've shown they can finish in that kind of region of the Premier League for the past the past two seasons. So I, I reckon they'll do it again. So yeah, Nuno's a great manager and I don't reckon that they'll collapse. Now, in fourth, I've gone with Everton. Now, I've predicted Everton to finish in the Champions League. I did say I like to be different. This will be a shock to everyone, and they'll all be like, what? But Carlo Ancelotti, this is his first full season, so he's a time to sign the players he wants, and he is a world-class manager. Everton are so lucky to have him, because I reckon he can take them. He can, he, he'll be able to do what Martinez did and take them to the Champions League. Um, because he signed Ducore, Allen and Rodriguez and I was shocked when Rodriguez went to Everton I was like what a player of that quality going to Everton who who didn't finish uh, that high last season they finished they finished 12th last season so I'm predicting them to rise eight places but they have got probably the best manager in the Premier League maybe maybe behind Guardiola and Klopp they've got the best manager in the Premier League and he is used to success so uh I just hope Everton don't bottle it again because they always seem to have plans to do well and then finish below 10th. 
but I, I do reckon that season will be their season. In third, I've gone with Liverpool. Now, they won the league last season. They've been quiet in the transfer window, but when you win the league, you don't really ha have to do much. It's just like you've already got a league winning team there. Um, and also, they are probably quite low on money due to the whole pandemic situation. I've put them third because, comparing Liverpool and Man City, right, say if both of the teams were, say, playing Burnley at home, Man City would smash them 4-5-0, but then Liverpool would win, like, 1-0, or they might win 3-2, or, or they'd only just get the job done. So I think that will come back to bite them, and teams will, like actually get draws with them or maybe even beat them because they're not very good at winning games convincingly that's what i found anyway i pundits haven't really mentioned that but that's what i found man city do more of the winning convincingly um and i feel like their players might be a bit distracted because they've already got success like they've already won the league so there's not as much desire to win it again because i i don't think they would won the premier league before and the players wanted to prove they could do it, but now that they've proved that, I think they'll be... They'd obviously still want to win it, but I don't think they'd play as well. They wouldn't play as though... Because it wouldn't be the first time, so they're not playing as though they're making history, if that makes sense. Also with Liverpool, before lockdown and after lockdown, they showed signs of a little wobble. Like, I remember, it seems like ages ago, when they lost to Watford in February, but... That was actually that many games ago. There's just been two fairly big breaks uh, since then. They lost to Chelsea as well in the FA Cup. They they lost to Man City. Was it was it four or five nil? I think. So they have shown that since like February, they're not their usual selves. Like if it wasn't for that great run in the first part of the season, then I don't think they could have won the title. So. If they continue the form they've had since, like, the start of February, that, I don't think, is good enough form to win a title. In second, I've gone with Chelsea. Now, Chelsea finished fourth last season, but they have had an absolute blinder of a transfer window. Werner, Ziyech, Chilwell, uh, Saar, Thiago Silva and Kai Havertz. They are all absolutely incredible signings. Like, if I was a Chelsea fan, I'd be happy with maybe one or two of those signings, but... They have signed six really, really good players there. And hopefully they'll all gel into the squad and my prediction of them coming second will be correct. But Lampard, in my opinion, has not put a foot wrong as a manager. Obviously, he's lost games, but I don't feel he's done anything wrong like himself, like as a manager. And he's got an amazing squad to work with. That is probably... One of the best squads in the Premier League now. Probably probably rivaling Liverpool and Man City. That's why I reckon Chelsea will compete with them for the title and it won't be a two-horse race. Like, Thiago Silva, he's such a good player. I can't wait to see what he's like in the Premier League. In first, I have gone for Manchester City. Now, they signed uh, Torres, who I think he can be a really good player. That's what happens with Pep Guardiola. He makes plays into amazing players. He's made Foden, Mares, both Silvers, Sterling. Sterling's the main one, main one. Jesus, he makes players so much better. Like, they come in without much experience, uh, without playing uh, amazingly well. And he makes them into world-class players. So I reckon he'll do that with Torres as well. Ake's a weird one. Uh, I never thought he'd go there, but... Uh, He's he's a good backup at least, but I just feel they have obviously lost David Silva, but I just feel Man City are unstoppable at times. I've seen them play. I've seen De Bruyne in particular. They just they just look absolutely unstoppable at times. No team can even like get out of their own half against them sometimes. And Guardiola is an amazing manager. He does sometimes make mistakes like he did against Leon, but. In the Premier League, it's not one shot like the Champions League. And I just can't see anybody else winning it because... And also, Man City wanted to prove a point. Like, I think it was Foden that said after the the Liverpool game, when they beat them, like, we're showing that, like, we are still a good team and, like, we are challenging them next season. So I reckon that will drive them to really be successful. 
Thank you for watching this video. It's been two videos in quite a close period of time. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Uh, I do basically have nothing going on at the moment. So that's why I'm making them. And yeah, I might make another video at the end of the season reviewing these predictions. Seeing how many I got right. Seeing if my wild card shouts of Everton coming forth. Or Newcastle going down are correct. And yeah, hopefully... Uh, I'll see you on future videos.